fellow members, and most welcome guests. My speech this evening is Can You Handle It? Can you handle it? Can you handle it? Can you handle it? Can, has anybody been a foster carer before? In the audience, anybody? I wondered if you can handle it. I will say briefly, I have actually worked in the legal field for many years, but I wanted to give something back. And I love children, and I only have one. So I, I know a couple of friends who are foster carers, and one of them said to me, Denise, you would make a brilliant foster carer. Three attempts at being a foster carer because I love to socialise, <coughs> and my work also included late nights, so at that particular, well, it took me three, three attempts before I decided to become a foster carer. Being in the legal field, I used to start work at 9.30 in the morning. Sometimes I didn't finish till 4.30 the following morning. Take a taxi home. And there was one particular time at Christmas, I finished work at 8.30 the following morning. And I had to be back at work five hours later. So I know what it's like Working long hours, tough, but very enjoyable, working in the city. So I took up this challenge of being a foster carer because I wanted to give something back. And that was as well as doing my currency trading, as some of you all well know, that's what I enjoy doing too. So I tried to see if I could balance both of the roles, but being a foster carer, isn't as easy as people assume it is. I really do have to take my hats off to them because as much as I've worked so many hours in the city, long hours, can't justify the two roles at all. As I said, I love children. So on the third attempt, I decided to become a foster carer. Was I sure? I love socialising, but I gave it a try. I left work 2013. It wasn't until the April that I got my first placement. And I will give you three different examples of different types of children that I had. The first two children I had were babies. A three-month-old baby and a 30-month-old baby. Everybody said, are you crazy, Denise? Are you mad? Nappies. Crying at night. And the 13-month-old, she had been placed three times in her short life. She had issues. She had nightmares. So she would be keeping us up late at night. I had to work really, really hard with her. She was a beautiful little soul. Her brother, he, was, he had to go into foster care from day one. But he wasn't affected, as was his sister. So he was easier to look after. He was a bundle of joy. But in all of this, I was able to make her talk properly, walk properly, and also embrace people as well and don't be frightened of people. And also her nightmares went, she was able to relax because she saw me as her new mum. They were beautiful children. Every morning we would sing, I'm so happy. And they would sing in their cots and we would sing together and that was a good start to the day. And this I would do every day with them. Eight months later, they had to be taken away from me because they were going to be adopted and before they were adopted their paternal family came along and Christmas, just before Christmas, they were gone. I cried my eyes out. They were beautiful children and I just hope that wherever they are, you know, they have improved, they are growing and they, they are enjoying their lives. The second 
placement I had. It was a teenage boy. I said, teenagers? No, I can't work with teenagers. But this particular time, they were desperate. And they said, please, Denise, it's only going to be three days. Three days turned out to be three weeks. We got on really, really well. You know, he saw himself as my son. And all he ate was pizzas. <laughs> and he loved his music. And he, he had great fun in the three weeks. And we still keep in touch. And that was two years ago. And the third placement was three siblings. They came from a really violent family background. All the children had seen violence growing up. And especially the um, older boys. So there were three, ten, and eleven. And the eleven-year-old boy, because of all the violence he had seen in the family, he brought it to his school. So he was a bully. They always complained about him being a bully. So in Whilst he was with me, I had to take him to football, he bullied. He started a new school, he bullied. And it was such a shame because those children, they were really, really gifted, very, very bright children, but the parents didn't have time for them. And also, being a foster carer, you've got all of the paperwork, it's very paper-filled, it's very paper-driven, so you're always doing reports. You've got to report anybody who comes to your house. You've got to report everything they eat. You've got to report any medication they take. You've got to report about their day. So as much as it being a hard job, me losing weight because I lost a lot of weight, very rewarding, but at the same time, very, very stressful. Now the three children, it was, as I said, what they did with the young brother, they tried to make him into a bully. And he was such a lovely little boy. But this is what they were doing. But the local authorities tried to keep them together. And I said, no, it's not going to work. So they had to move because of their violent parents. And with me just being on my own at the time, I couldn't have them there anymore. So I had to let them go. But he still keeps in touch. It's nice if he sees my car out, he comes and says hello. But what I'd like to put to you all, if you do know a foster carer, just pay them a visit, volunteer, tell them, 10 minutes, go and have a cup of coffee. I will sit and watch your children. Because nobody understands the pressures that they go through. And just not having time to have me time, if only they could. Because that's a valuable job that they do. Mr. Toastmaster.